Let's talk about nature journals for just a minute, okay. because I know you talk about that in your book. What exactly is a nature journal and how okay. do you use it? Because it doesn't even have to be on a hike, right? I mean, like you mm -hmm. could use it in your backyard. Totally. Yeah. Nature journals are really fun. Um, and I, there are all kinds of different approaches to nature journaling. Some people uh, are really specific. They only want a nature journal to have art that the kid has drawn um, or painted in them. Some people are more open. They're like, hey, you could take a photograph and tape it in there. Your nature journal could be just like you said, like drawings of things that they find or photographs of things they find in the backyard. Um, writing about a description, let's say you discover, you know, a new bug in your backyard. What we always do is we like use it as an opportunity to learn mm -hmm. about something new that we've seen and then write, learn about that. Like look it up in a field guide, look it up on online. Um, find a few interesting pieces of information, write those down in the journal along with a drawing of the flower or the bug or the tree or whatever it is. Um, so it's kind of a record of our hikes and our explorations mm -hmm. and our discoveries. Um, but it's also a, like kind of our own personal field guide of the various yeah. things we've discovered along the way. It's so much more fun than just reading about things in a book. You know, the different trees and the different bugs and critters mm -hmm. and animals and everything that we see, even, um, you know, where, where we live, we have a trail path that goes right behind our house. And so it's fun. We get to watch people walk on the trail all the time. And wherever there's mud, oftentimes we'll see animal, you know, mm -hmm. pumpkins. And, and yeah. so we're always looking at it. We're trying to identify like, what kind of animal is that one? And, um, and it's fascinating to realize how many, because they're typically animals we don't see during the day, mm -hmm. but I think at nighttime is when they come out. Yes, and, for sure. Uh, and so it's fun to just try to identify the different prints that we see. Yeah. yeah. That's actually reminds me of another really fun summer activity is to go on a night hike. Because oh, when yeah. you go on a night hike, it you're going to possibly encounter animals that you wouldn't encounter normally during the day. But also you're just, your senses are you're interacting with the trail and with nature in a different way and using mm -hmm. your senses differently because you can't see as well. And ideally you aren't hiking with a headlamp because that limits your vision. Instead you're using like a headlamp maybe that has a red light. So it gives you just a little bit of light to see the trail, but it change it still allows you to see everything else or if you want a really bright moonlit night when there's a full moon, you don't even have to use a headlamp or a red light. And that is just the best. It's so, it's just getting outside of that, how you do things normally. Yeah. That just helps us. Like it shakes us up, right? Yeah. We're, we're just like, oh yeah, we're, we always do this. We're used to hiking. And then all of a sudden you're hiking in the dark and things are different. And that is so engaging and it's yeah. so memorable. Yeah. So fun for kids. And like you said, it's just a great way to cultivate relationships and connections yes, with our kids and, exactly. and making memories that they will not forget. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 